Hello everyone, my name is Shalanda Chaudhary and in this video I'll be explaining about what is Application Gateway, its features, components and how it works. So let's start. So Application Gateway is a web-based load balancer that works on OSI layer 7, which is an application layer. So if you look at the OSI model, there are seven layers and Application Gateway works on layer 7, which is an application layer. And it is also called as HTTP layer. However, if we'll talk about the traditional load balancers, they mostly work on layer 3 and layer 4, which are network layer and transport layer. So this means all the routing happens only on the basis of source port, destination port, and source IP address and destination IP address. However, Application Gateway is an intelligent load balancer because it works at application layer. So it routes the traffic based on incoming request HTTP attributes, like host path based routing or URI based routing or the host headers. If we'll check the diagram on the right side, this shows how host path based routing works in application gateway. For the traffic hitting the application gateway, application gateway checks the URI path. If it finds images in the URI path, it will route the traffic towards image server pool, which is the backend specifically designed to cater images. And if it finds video in the URI path, then the traffic will be routed towards the video server pool. So in short, you can say application gateway is a specialized load balancer designed for web applications and it offers advanced routing and security features at application layer. Let's move on to the features of application gateway. So the first one is SSL TLS termination. So SSL TLS termination, it allows the application gateway to decrypt the HTTPS traffic before it passes to the backend server. So it offloads the CPU intensive decryption from backend servers, which improve their performance. There is one more benefit of using the SSL TLS termination that is the centralized certificate management. So you don't need to manage the certificates on the backend server. However, you can just manage the certificates on the application gateway and all the decryption and the encryption will happen at application gateway only. But this doesn't mean that application gateway supports only SSL and TLS termination. So it supports end-to-end -end TLS encryption and decryption. Another one is the auto scaling. As the name suggests, application gateway will automatically adjust the number of the gateway instances based on the traffic demand. So if in case there is a performance requirement during the traffic spikes, it will increase the number of instances and during the period of low traffic, it will reduce the number of instances which will further reduce the cost of using application gateway. Third one is zone redundancy. Application gateway is a regional service. So that means for the case of high availability, and fault tolerance, you need to deploy application gateway in multiple regions. However, after the support for Azure availability zones, now the high availability and the fault tolerance can be provided by distributing the application gateway instances across different zones. Now application gateway provides the feature of static virtual IP. So that means the public IP which is created for the application gateway will remain unchanged till the life cycle of application gateway. This is a very useful feature because the DNS registration of the custom domains to the public IP of the application gateway is not to be done multiple times. Another one is web application firewall. So application gateway during the creation provides a feature where you can enable the web access firewall or web application firewall. Using the web application firewall, application gateway protects your web applications from different security threats like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, I'll create a separate video for web access firewall or web application firewall. Another one is ingress controller for AKS. This is very useful feature when you're using the Azure Kubernetes cluster. Previously, this support was not provided. So you had to use NGNX ingress controller or any third party controllers. But now application gateway can be used for traffic routing or load balancing of containerized application. This one is URL based routing. So the application gateway checks the URL of the traffic and then using the different routing rules which are created for the different backend server. Like if there is a music in the URL, it will go to the backend servers which will cater for the music and if there is a video in the URL, the traffic will be routed to the backend server which can handle the video traffic. Another important feature is multi-site hosting. So now you can use the application gateway to host multiple domains. You have to create separate routing rules, separate backend servers, and application gateway will be smart enough to check the traffic and redirect it based on URL or HTTP headers. 
Application Gateway also provides redirection. In some cases, the URL of a web application has changed, but the users are still reaching to the previous URL. So in that case, there you can set up a redirection on the application gateways. If someone is using the old URL, still it will be redirected to the new URL and the traffic will be handled by the backend servers. Uh, there are other redirection like HTTP to HTTPS redirection. So if a user is not typing HTTPS uh, before the application, still all the redirection will be taken care by application gateway. Another important feature is session affinity. It is also called a sticky session. This is used mostly in the case of the application which use uh, cookie based sessions. So that means a user session state should be maintained and the traffic should go to the same backend server which was catering the user or the traffic. Application get always load balance the traffic between the backend servers to maintain the session state. Session affinity has to be enabled on application gateway. And the last one is rewrite HTTP headers and URL. Using the application gateway, now you can modify or rewrite the HTTP headers or the URL from the request and the, or the response. There are two versions of application gateway in Azure which can be deployed, version one and version two. So the version two supports more features as compared to the version one. And now Microsoft recommends to deploy version two instead of version one. And if someone is using version one in their existing environment, it's recommended to migrate to version two. So on this slide, there are the features which are supported by version two and not available in version one. Version two supports auto scaling so that it can auto scale based on the traffic loads. Version two also supports zone redundancy, static virtual IP, AKS ingress controller. We have discussed this in the previous slide. Version two now supports the vault integration, which means the certificate used for TLS authentication of application gateway can now be stored in key vault. So the rotation and the maintenance of the certificates can now be done in a more efficient way. Version two also supports had a rewrite enhanced network control, which we have already discussed. Now mutual authentication is supported by version two. Mutual authentication is also called as client authentication, where the web browser used by the server has to present the digital certificate to application gateway. And then application gateway verifies that certificate against its own certificate. Once the user certificate is accepted and trusted by application gateway, then the connection is established between user and application gateway. It's like an added layer of security. Version two also supports private endpoint support and health props. Application gateway constantly monitors the health of the backend servers and the routing of the traffic happens only to the healthy backend servers. It prevents the packet loss now. Now I'll talk about the components and the workflow of the application gateway. Here are some of the components like front end IP address, listeners, routing rules, HTTP settings, backend pool and health props. I'll show these components in Azure portal so that it'll be easy to understand. This is not a hands-on video, so I have already deployed the application gateway. I'll create a separate video for step-by-step -step demonstration of application gateway deployment. So before the creation of application gateway, I created a virtual machine. It's a windows 2019 server and I have installed IIS on it so that it can act as a web server. Now let's go to the application gateway. Based on the Microsoft recommended naming convention, I have named it AGW, which is application gateway demo and AAE is the short form or abbreviation for Australia East and 001. So it's in the resource group RG demo application gateway and it's connected to virtual network VNet demo AAE and the subnet is app gateway subnet. The condition for creating an application gateway is the subnet should be empty. So if you look at the configuration, you can enable the auto scaling from here. Right now it's manual. There is only one instance of application gateway, which is available and HTTP two is enabled. So if you want to auto scale it, you can set up the minimum instance count and the maximum is 125. Let's discard it now. Web application firewall WOF can be enabled, but right now it's only the standard version V2. If you want to enable the WAF, create a new WAF policy and then save it. Backend pools. The Windows server 
or the Windows web server which I have created is added to the backend pool. Now there are multiple target types which can be added based on the IP address or fully qualified domain name. So that means application gateway is not limited only for Azure. It can be used for on-prem as well as the different clouds. There should be a connectivity between the virtual network where application gateway is deployed and to the target virtual machine. And you can just directly define the virtual machines, virtual machine scale set and the app services in Azure. So for now, and the target is demo web 013, which is a private IP assigned to the server. In the backend settings, it is defined that the backend protocol is HTTP. You can enable HTTPS, but for that we need TLS authentication. The backend port is 80. You can enable the cookie based affinity, which is also called a session affinity from here and the connection draining in case you are making the changes on the website and you want the users to get the latest changes, then you can do the connection draining from here. Front end IP address. Application gateway can be used as an internal web load balancer as well as external. So a public IP is created if you want to use it for the external load balancer. Here you can see one public IP is created for it. So that means if someone wants to reach the application gateway from internet, this public IP will be used for it. And in case of the different URLs like the custom domains, the custom domain has to be registered with this public IP address. You can enable the private endpoints from here or the private links. SSL profiles can be created, which means TLS authentication where the certificates has to be provided. As you can click here, you can see upload a new certificate. Listeners, a listener is created for the front end IP address, which is a public IP to the port 80 and a routing rule is associated with it. In the listener type, you can define the basic, which is by default or a multi-site where you want to use the different domain for the application gateway. So the routing rules are defined here where the listener is selected, which means if traffic hits the public IP of the application gateway, then it should go to the backend target, which is the backend pool that is defined here. You can set up the redirection also. It can be temporary permanent redirection to a different target listener. You can create the rewrites from here and the health probe. You can define the health probe on which, on which port application gateway should monitor the backend pools. And if there is a specific path, it should look for. So these are the components of application gateway. Now let's discuss the workflow. So when a user using the web browser hits the IP address of application gateway. It can be the custom domain if you have registered it to DNS, otherwise it should be the front end IP or the public IP of the application gateway. Once the traffic goes to the application gateway, it goes to the listener. Listener is created for the public IP and it has the routing rule attached to it. So then the traffic goes to the routing rule and the routing rule defines which backend pool or which backend server the traffic should go to. So it, it can be multiple virtual machine, virtual machine scale sets, on-prem or the different app servers or Azure app services. If we'll just look at the application gateway, which I have deployed, there is a public IP attached to it. So let's copy this public IP. So we have listener routing rules and the backend pool, everything in place. So if we'll try to hit this public IP from the browser, it should show the default page for Windows Server. So as you can see, this is IIS services are enabled on the Windows Server and this is the default page which comes up and it's working fine. As we have already discussed, there are multiple features which we can enable like multi-site hosting, path-based routing, URL-based routing, we can set it up. So to conclude this video, Application Gateway is a smart web-based load balancer which checks the HTTP header and the URL of the request and then does the routing accordingly. Application Gateway provide a lot of features which makes it a good choice for the load balancing and routing of web applications. That's all for this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.